I guess I'll start with the names. The two leads had way too obvious names to make fun of. Seriously, is anybody actually named Toke? T-O-K-E. I've never heard of anyone named that. If anyone out there is named that, I'm not making fun of your name. Tilde, I guess, was like a nickname for Matilda. Also, if someone is literally named Anemone or Anemone, I would think that they would be the most obvious target in that entire classroom. I'll honestly admit, when I saw that scene early on in the classroom, and Alf walked up and had to talk about something that he cares about, I did sort of expect that he might, you know, bring out the ballet shoes. And I was just sitting there thinking, Don't, you're not that stupid. Don't admit it. And I was very relieved to find that he wasn't that stupid, that he was smart enough to try to hide it, and it was the others that already knew. You know, and him standing up there afraid to stand out, so he just, you know, said, oh, my cell phone is my very favorite thing in the world. That was so spot on. That is exactly what bullying does to people. It makes us afraid to stand out. It makes us afraid to be individuals. Since I already mentioned Tilda, I guess I'll round off her character real quick. She's way too overly innocent for the entire thing, and she just immediately accepts his apology. I mean, he didn't even seem to say, it was Toga who told me to do it. She just instantly accepts it. It was maybe also over the top that literally every single time they tried to make contact, Toka showed up and prevented it. I mean, other than that one time where Alf is, you know, home and, you know, sitting there with the younger sister, other than that, Toka was always right there. I mean, what was there, like, three separate scenes where he keeps them apart? What was his beef with her, anyway? Was it just that he was afraid she'd keep them down to the bottom of the food chain? The film is a little bit clumsy in setting up who's popular and who's not. The very first time I saw Matthias, I didn't think that, oh, he's definitely in charge of that class. Until this position as also a victim of the bullies was kind of just thrown in there, it seemed. It wasn't established as early as it was for Toka and Alf to be victims. Also, that kid who talked about, if anybody messes with my cell phone, I will destroy you, wasn't that the kid that then had his cell phone destroyed by Matthias? Nothing seemed to come of that. Am I the only one who was expecting a payoff there? The film really needed to more successfully establish these are the popular kids, these are the unpopular kids. I mean, basically, the only two that I could point to and say those are definitely popular kids are Matias and the blonde kid, who may or may not have been Mr. Aggressive's cell phone ad. And Toka and Alf never really seemed to do anything to them. I mean, other than beating the crap out of Matias near the end. Was it the blonde kid that got his legs broken? How insane was that, by the way? And Alexander just popped out of nowhere and then kind of seemed to disappear again. I mean, how do we even know that he was popular? Because he had a scarf. Scarves in this movie equal popularity. Seriously, I would have gone with, like, designer clothing, something clearly cool. No. They went with scarves. And near the end, Toka got, you know, manga hair. Here's a note to any budding potential filmmakers out there. The two mediums are different. What looks good in a comic does not necessarily look good on the silver screen. Manga hair does not look good in the real world. The whole thing with them rising through the ranks and ending up as the most popular kids, I was kind of expecting it to backfire or for the film to wind up pointing out, hey, all of the kids in this classroom are now the popular crowd. Who is no longer popular? I'm also unclear on what exactly set Toka off on his Guantanamo Bay torture rampage of ALF. I mean, he knew that ALF did not approve of him turning Fight Club into Project Mayhem. Why did it 
make such a difference that he showed up, knocked on the door, let him in, and then he stands there and says, this has gone too far. I mean, he didn't even meet the Hollywood cliché requirements. I'm gonna bust you, man. I'm gonna blow this whole thing wide open. Have you forgotten where you came from? You are out of line. Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. I mean, it was basically... The club was a bad idea. Well, I've heard enough. Rope him, brand him with fireworks, hang him upside down, potentially risking his death. At this particular point in time, I would like to point out that these kids are like 12. I would also like to remind the writer, who apparently by his own admission loves Lord of the Flies, that this is not taking place on a deserted island with a bunch of school children having crashed there. It takes place in a school. There are parents, there are teachers, there are adults. There is an outside world. There are no grounds for the same kind of barbaric acts that took place in Lord of the Flies. Then again, where were the parents? Alf apparently didn't have a father, and we barely saw Toka's parents, only his older sister who constantly smoked. This is a bit of a frequent problem with children's films. It's kind of all on the kids' shoulders. They're the ones that have the problem, they're the ones that have to fix it, and there are just no adults around, or at least none that can help. I think it might have added to the movie if there had been just one scene of them trying to talk to a teacher and it not helping. Is it just me, or did they seriously break Alf's toe at the beginning? That's really messed up. Not to mention them nearly killing Tolga. And was there some significance to the last line with the you know that your foot may never be completely the same? I mean, the toe breaking didn't occur after they started fighting back. They didn't cause it by any stretch of the imagination. Was that Anemona kissing Alf? Why on earth did she keep going for so long? I mean, she gave him advice twice, and then finally they arrive. Also, her line, I think it was, that's why I had nothing to do with this. Maybe I misheard. Maybe she said, that's why I helped with this. Because she doesn't have nothing to do with it. She helps them. If it wasn't for her luring him out there, they wouldn't have caught him like that. Also, I may not have really realized who it was that went to Tolka and told him Alf needs her help. But if it was blonde guy, shouldn't Tolka have known? And if it wasn't him, maybe that's specifically why that third really anonymous member of the trio was that anonymous. Maybe we were supposed to think, ah, oh, he's gonna get helped, and then it surprises us the way it surprised Tolka. I don't know. Did anybody else expect the Volume 5 thing to, to have more of an impact? I was thinking it was going to show that Nicolo's entire revenge quest was a bad idea, and maybe it sort of did, but it didn't have the impact that I thought maybe that was the one thing that the kid couldn't properly, con maybe it was a flaw in editing, I don't know. I would say that a couple of the setups were really obvious. No, Volume 5 hasn't come out yet. I'm pretty sure there were other things, but I can't remember them right now. You have to destroy your model airplanes. Well, okay, but as you'll see once the scene cuts, it's not actually model airplanes as much as toy airplanes, the kind you fly with a controller, which is actually a completely different thing, because model airplanes is the kind you assemble with glue, and, you know, it comes in parts. Maybe it's because I just recently rewatched the entire Alien Quadrilogy, but does anybody think that Jonesy the Cat was an alien reference? So, you found my bunny. Yeah, as it turns out, it actually wasn't very far away from where we left it. For some reason it survived, even though it was now a tame animal and probably shouldn't have been returned to the wild, but more like sold to someone else who could take care of it. And I also somehow found the exact same route back to the place where we left it. Okay. So, are we ignoring the fact that earlier in the movie I tried to force you to chop its head off with a shovel? You're still the evil dude and the innocent guy? Okay. 